Let's see if that works. I have not many, uh, many faith. All right, we'll do this. Uh, perfect. So we didn't grab anything. I'll have to go do that later. Boop. Okay. Let me get with the cat boys in chat. The only reason I'm going to be in comms tonight is to have our conversations. There's really no need for anyone else to join necessarily. Uh, okay. Good deal. You're from the future and not much has changed. Well, that's good. <laughs> I suppose. Okay, well, off we go. I really don't know anything about this. Let me go get my door real quick. Sorry. Oh. Oh, yeah. My dick. I'm playing with Algorithmic Fire. This is actually on a separate account to the one that I actually watch my YouTube on. We're solid. Um, yeah, and I've already I've already gone into other Final Fantasy videos and told them I'm not interested. <laughs> so hopefully I will not get uh, spoiler bombed by douchebags who put spoilers in their title and, and um, thumbnails. Complete and utter unethical douchebags are the people who do that. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very careful about uh, protecting myself as well in that way. So anyway, let's watch this and see what's going on. Because I haven't seen it yet. I have no idea what I'm in for. I've been told I'll know when it's time to stop watching. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Singing 14 would remain an issue for years to come. In the midst of a housing crisis, Final Fantasy XIV's first anniversary is fast approaching. August the 27th, 2014, would mark the one-year anniversary of the game's relaunch as A Realm Reborn, and Yoshi P and his team wanted to mark the occasion with a multitude of events, both in and out of game. An anniversary website was launched, featuring an anniversary countdown with illustrations made by various members of the Final Fantasy XIV art team, published every day leading up to the anniversary. Another feature, and my absolute favorite, was the Tales from the Calamity. This was a collection of five stories chronicling the events before, during, and after the Calamity. This helped bridge some of the game's five-year story gap between 1.0 and A Realm Reborn, as well as providing some new background lore for existing characters. This is a highly recommended read if you haven't read it already. Link is in the description, so make sure to give it a read after watching this video. Okay. Mr. Catboys, is that something I should look into, or those five stories? Yes. Okay. What, like, very soon, like Wednesday before Thursday? Or like, just in general? Just in general, if you get some spare time and want to read. I definitely do. Okay, cool. In-game, in the first ever Rising event, the Wandering Minstrel, representing Yoshi P in the game, addressed the players in a song, thanking them for their support through the troubled times the game has been through. Aww. It's hard to put into words how much this event meant to both Legacy and A Realm Reborn players. It was the first time the director and producer spoke to us, albeit indirectly, about what we'd been through as a community. It felt intimate and real. It reminded us that the game could have ended two years ago, but instead we're here, celebrating the one-year anniversary of the game's rebirth. The rising event was short, but sweet. Finally, the game's developers posted their own messages to the players on the anniversary website every day leading up to the anniversary, ending with Naoki Yoshida's message on the day of the anniversary. While the in-game event spoke to us in a more indirect way, this was directly from Yoshi P to us, the players. It went as follows. To all you FFXIVers out there, first I'd like to thank you for playing, of course, but also for all of your feedback and words of support over the past year. I think I speak for everyone here on the team when I say that nothing brings us greater joy than seeing you, our players, enjoying your adventures in the world of Eorzea. Sometimes it feels as though we've just gotten started, and yet here we are, celebrating the first anniversary of A Realm Reborn. Again, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who have stayed by our side and helped us reach this momentous milestone. We've surmounted quite a few obstacles in the past year, from the server congestion and login issues at the start of official service, 
to the subsequent setbacks that delayed the release of Patch 2.1 and several anticipated new game features. My own miscalculations were to blame for these issues and I sincerely apologize to all of you who were affected. While the past year has left me with much to learn from, it's also left me with many fond memories, particularly of meeting players across the globe. Your kind words of support really do mean the world to me. If we count from the days of version 1.0, September would have actually marked the fourth anniversary of Final Fantasy XIV. For four years, we have worked furiously to create a game worthy of our fans, and it warms my heart to know that many of our legacy players have supported us through our hardships. Though the realm looks very different today than it did four years ago, I trust that you have many fond memories of your time in Eorzea, and hope that you will make many more in the years to come. As we commemorate the game's anniversary and take in all the lessons learned from our first year, the team is already charging forward full bore with new ideas and aspirations for version 3.0. In our mission to create an expansion that truly takes Final Fantasy XIV to the next level, there's little time for celebration here at the office. We still have many moms to travel before the expansion, but in the meantime, I hope you're all looking forward to patch 2.4 and all the new systems and features to come with it. This year, we'll also be holding our very first fan festival. It's been four years coming, and I'm very excited to celebrate Final Fantasy XIV in grand fashion with fans the world over. There are no words to describe how ecstatic we are to see A Realm Reborn thriving as it reaches its first anniversary. With our commitment to bring you over ten years of adventure, you can be sure that we're only getting started. I hope you'll stay with us in the years to come as we strive even harder to make Eorzea a place we can all be proud to call home. See you all soon at upcoming events, at the Fan Festival, in my letters from the producer, and most of all, in Eorzea. On August the 23rd, 2014, the first ever 14-hour broadcast was aired, featuring Yoshi P and various other members of the dev team celebrating A Realm Reborn. This would become a tradition that still continues to this day. If you reach the 2014 end of the would also letter be the from year Yoshi P, you can stop. Okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay. Perfect. He said I would know. I did not know. I was too dumb. <laughs> All right. Uh, my 14 would not launch uh, earlier, and I forgot about that. Gotcha. Okay. I would feel safer if I was linked directly to the ones that I am allowed to read, if that makes sense. I hate to feel like I'm being catered to, but I also like to think that I'm being protected from spoilerinos, and I might accidentally uh, click on something I'm not supposed to, and I really don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I got a little emotional hearing that, too, because, like, I was just thinking, like, that is exactly how a dev should sound when they're talking about their game and their community and their journey. It's exactly how they should sound. He was grateful. He was humble. He was excited. Uh, I, I think that's all wonderful. I Really, I don't think there's another human on the planet who could have done what Yoshi P has done. Honestly, I think he's just the man for the job. Um, just, I mean, everything I've seen about him just seems like he's got the right mentality, he's got the right skills, the right experience, he's got the right determination, the right amount of determination, I think he's got the right vision. Um, I, it just, down the line, just check, 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 everything that had to be just right for all of this to work out, um, it did. And I mean, it's so easy to imagine a world in which Final Fantasy XIV just flopped, you know? Um, and then here we are in the alternative timeline, which for once is not worse. The alternative timeline is actually better. Uh, and that's that's really nice. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm more excited about the game the more I play it. And I keep thinking about, um, I keep thinking about when people have said, and I don't know how much this is still a thing, but I, I just remember you guys telling me that the, the biggest obstacle to Final Fantasy XIV is getting through ARR. But once you do, the game is phenomenal. Yes, actually. ARR is very daunting just mm. in its 
size just yes. just in its size and a lot of new players will get discouraged before they even get halfway through it mm. um and that's disappointing I think a lot of that comes from um, the story jank and the way they've had to retool all of the MSQ, like, I think twice at this point. Wow. I would still agree with that, yeah. I get overwhelmed as well, and I think that's part of why I didn't look at the story at all, is I realized the volume of what I was getting into, that if I didn't just go with the couple things I was interested in doing, I would be so overwhelmed I wouldn't end up doing any of it. And I figured not paying attention to the story is the easiest compromise to make if all I'm really interested in is, one, the only reason I even played it to begin with was because I wanted an excuse to hang out with my friends. Second, I had always been interested in playing an MMO, but I wasn't really sure if I could commit to playing one, like, for sure, uh, as opposed to just kind of digging around in it from, uh, from on occasion. And then third... Um, I wasn't sure what I would even end up wanting to do, so I just defaulted to the stuff I always like to do, which is fuck over the economy and get rich as I possibly can. Um, but that doesn't even seem really relevant in this game, and yet I still find myself attached. Anybody who knows me knows that my favorite mechanic in any game is how to amass wealth. <laughs> and jank ways to do it. Um, and uh, I, I love playing in a way that doesn't necessarily break the game, but explores its unique corners <laughs> and uh, Final Fantasy hasn't necessarily encouraged me to do any of that and I haven't felt the urge to do any of that often what happens is I'll, I'll get into a game and I'll figure it out and get bored and stop playing or I'll still be interested enough in some of the mechanics that I'll start dicking around in the game um, as in like I'll just find weird little niche things to try out just to see if they work but it's usually when I'm kind of coming to the end of things that I know I need to do. Uh, also, shout out to Shooter McShooter. Uh, great name. So I, I, I haven't found any of that with this. I've never been like, oh, what are we going to do today? It's always like, well, shit, there's an unlimited list of shit I got to get through. <laughs> and not that I even that I have to get through it. It's um, There were definitely parts of the relic that I was like, I have to get through this in order to get my boat, but it was worth it, and I'm glad I did it. Um, but hey, Miko. Yes, my love. At some point during your trial stuff tonight, you should probably head to the Apkalu Falls in Verdania and go talk to the dude off to the side. He'll have a special thing since you cleared Bahamut. Oh, okay. Awesome. I know where that is, too. He lied. <laughs> I'll figure it out. All right. You couldn't make it through the normal level to grind? The normal level grind to get to end game. Wait, seriously, Frackle? Is that... That is like the least of... That would be the least of my concerns at all. There are so many great ways to level. Here's what I think the problem is. Here's ultimately where I think that comes down to. It's not even necessarily that the volume is so high. It's that there's so little guide rails to tell you what to do. They just kind of plop you into whatever one of the three cities you're in. And then it's just fucking everything all at once. And you're like, oh, God. Yeah. Frackle, I think maybe it would Which keep... Which is true. Like... It, if you've never played MMOs before, you need a little bit of guidance. Um, and yeah. a lot of newer MMOs now do have that. Like, mm. they've got the training wheels a little bit to kind of get you going and then shoot you off after a certain point. Yeah. I definitely needed those guide rails. But I also had them because I had a community. Man, Frackle, I gotta be honest with you. The leveling can be very fast, especially if it's being expedited by a group of people who can power level you. And even if it isn't necessarily interesting, I think the getting through the levels is the prerequisite to being able to do the stuff that's really interesting. And like with M any MMO, I would say that the most interesting thing about it is uh, purely the, the things that you're doing with other people. Like our raid nights are fantastic. I really want to encourage you, especially because like you've you've seen parts of the stuff we're doing, and I'm I'm not to end game yet. I'm not even to mid game yet. I'm at the end of the base game. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been having such a great time pretty much throughout the whole thing. And especially if you've, if you, 
not that you necessarily have, but if you have been watching me go through the story this whole time, you can skip all the fucking cutscenes and just get right to the action. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I th when I went at it the first time, I was technically playing with, I think, Fern. Um, I think Leandri was there, but it was mostly just me and Fern kind of dicking around. She was um, really invested in the game, really fell in love with it, especially, I, I think, when she found uh, her, her people in the Bardi community. Um, but I was really sticking to crafting. I wanted to look at the markets. I was really just kind of looking at how to get all that done. But I found, I found that what I wanted isn't what this game is about. And then I got busy, and I was like, I just don't want to log in. Uh, there's nothing There's nothing keeping me in the game. So I think Frackle and I had pretty much the same experience. Um, where I focused almost entirely on the non-combat elements of things. Uh, but what I really wanted was the stuff related to combat. It's just that I didn't know it at the time, and I didn't know how to access it at the time. I bet, Frackle, if you started playing again, and you leaned into the community, I think that you would find that we are incredibly cuddly. I think you would. And I think you'd have a great time. And here's here's ultimately why I think you specifically, and I've said this before, when you have shown me Wildstar raids in the past, I looked at it and said, that looks almost identical to what I have seen of Final Fantasy raids. And I've only seen the basic bitch stuff. That wasn't even the creative stuff. I really think that there is something here for you, Frackle. I think it's just right beneath the surface. It's like an inch of ice, but if you can get through that, I really think you could have a great time, and it'd be yet another thing that you could, we could, we could do, we could do it together, Frackle. How long have we been looking for something that we could play together? Brother. <laughs> Brother of mine. <laughs> Come on. We've been looking for so long for something you and I could do together. Just to hang out. Nothing else. We can talk politics while, you know, shooting goobs. <laughs> like, we, I don't know. I consider it. I, I think we could have a good time. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad I made a, a compelling argument. I have wanted Frackle to join it. <gasps> My goob! Look at him. Frackle, that's going to be you once we get started. You're going to be so small, so cute, but still have so much presence. What a precious boy. I, I meant to use my... Okay, I'm a dirty liar. You don't have to go to Gridania anymore. You just have to open your achievement list. Oh. And under relevant, it should be under your last five, and it'll be listed as a reward you can claim from in there. Oh, I see. You're going to have to start over from achievement menu. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, if you open the achievement menu uh -huh. um, under relevant and last uh -huh. five, it should be one of the top things you've got. Yeah, it says out of a bind, and you can see where it says unclaimed on the little minion. If you oh. click on it, you can get it. Oh. Very nice. But look who it is. It's a wind up granddaddy. This is fantastic. Let's pop him out. Let's see what he's got going. Minion guide. But Miko, also, there's something important about that. So when you get a chance, I will show you the important part about that. Okay, I have him. Can I back into this one? Okay, you know, I would... There. Okay, I am planted and cannot move. I would love if the minions sometimes had interactions if they see another minion that they can be paired with nearby. Like a goob can run up to another goob and they sneeze on each other or something like that. But if you have like a wind up alley say or something, Louis Swa will go up and they'll just hug each other and then everyone in the area starts crying uncontrollably. <laughs> they do? What? What? I've never seen them interact with each other. Hang on, I'll be right there. Okay, I'm a very patient boy. Oh, I see a silver. Nice. Okay, I'm so curious to see. Okay, okay. Okay. Come on, Cap. Move again. Are you ready for the ship? I'm ready. Coolst? What is this? Wind up Bahamut. <laughs> Look at him. Oh. I was like, I think it's an apple. It's a wind-up apple. No, it's behind me. He's so cute. 
<laughs> they do. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Yeah, I've never seen minions interact like that. I hope, does he react to the wind up alley, say, in Alfino? I don't think so. There's only a few minions that have scripts that will actually interact um, at all with each other. Wow. And this isn't just because we're friends at all. If we were just like complete strangers in the wild, these two minions would be decking each other right now. Yeah. Incredible. There are a few pairs from later on that do the same thing. Like they'll try to beat the snot out of each other. It's amazing. I love this. This is so cute. This is almost like an Easter egg tier of obscure. The thing is, is it technically is because the Bahamut minion is no longer available. Oh. Um, he was attached to a music CD. You had to order in the first run of that CD to get him as a minion. Um, uh, and it was limited to that run. They didn't bring him back. He is very cute with his little There's Dalamud also, helmet. Um, the very <laughs> early CD, the very first one, which is actually Dalamud. It just a little floating Dalamud. And again, it's attached to that CD in the very first run. You can't get them anymore. Wow. Well, that is so cute. I'm glad I got to see this. Yeah, an interaction with the Wind Up Alley say they just give each other a hug. The Wind Up Alpha, no, I would just want him to just be like, give a thumbs up, but don't actually touch him because he's an asshole. <laughs> Was that the is that the Dalamud? No. Yeah, I wish more minions actually had actual interactions like that, but it is what it is. Yeah. Very cute. Thank you for showing. All right, old man, back in the hole. Who we got? Oh, it's the fattest, chunkiest boy. Perfect. Moogles dance together. Oh, I've got to see that one. I think I have a Moogle minion. I'm pretty sure I do. Of all the minions to have, surely I have the Moogle. How do you play Final Fantasy and not have a fucking Moogle? Also, Frackle, I want you to know we have a copy, uh, Capybara. Capybara. I don't remember how it's pronounced. We have a Cappy boy. Uh, and his name is Frackle. Just so you know. You're here, in spirit. <laughs> okay. I believe it's time for me to go do the Rising event. Um... Will you Who's if calling? You put the capybara on your super special island and let it roam. It talks about how many bodies it's buried, but how many bodies haven't been found. So it's like seven buried, zero found. I'm like, what the fuck have you been doing? Are you serious? Is that no meme? Yes, it is not a meme. It literal. That's literally what the minion says if you put it on your island. Frackle. Cannon. It's frackle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at them. The best. Now, if they roll over at the same time, I might explode. Oh, do it. I feel like they're nearly in sync with each other. Do it, you sluts! Wow. A bunch of Moogles can dance together, too. It's not just a couple. They are very chunky. There we go. I'm not seeing the roll. I'm not seeing it. Give me the wiggles. Here we go. Okay. Well. Oh, uh, if anybody... I have a spare. I just want to remind people. I have a spare Spriggan. Oh, there's one. Do it. Domino effect. Oh, come on. <laughs> I have a spare uh, Sprig Boy. If anybody wants it. Uh, I already have it, of course. It is the best minion. But if anybody doesn't have a copy of it, I do have an extra. I got gifted by a random person. Maybe it was a random viewer. I don't know who. Someone ran up to me and traded me. Gave me a couple minions and ran. I'm like, okay, goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> oh, shit. I have two letters. I just realized, yeah, we, we said that the other day. All right, I need to go check a Moogle. And go see um, what shit posts await me. Grand shit posts await me there. Uh, no, there might not even be a Moogle boy out here. I wouldn't deliver mail to this hellhole. Okay, so I need to go to Ulda 
in order to... I don't want to go... I have to go to Ulda. Hold on. I need to go there for a very specific couple of reasons. I'm going to go there, one, because that's where the rising event starts. Second, I want to go there because I need to... I need to show you the biggest complaint I have with what happened after the banquet. And then I will let it go. Okay? And, and then... I will let it go. His name is Lalacute. Very good. Okay. I want to go here. Very specific. Yid and Papa Limo are dead right here, right? Okay, canonically. They lowered a gate that doesn't exist there. But they, they lowered the gate. Oh, no, they lowered this one. Is this where they died? They died right here. Okay, never mind. They died right here. Uh, they lowered that gate, and then we ran off, I think, up there. I can't remember where we went, but um, this gate was open. So instead of them pouring in to kill them right there, if anyone had a brain and just went around this way, you know, they'd have, they'd have kept right up with us. So it just wasn't even necessary. Like, sure, it may have actually delayed by 20 seconds, 30 seconds, but... That is easily lost. And that's assuming that's the staircase we even had to get to. If it was any other one, then they had a better lead on us. How do we get to... How do we get to her... Or did we run left? I'm pretty sure we went right. I'm pretty sure it was that one that they died at. Yeah, because they came down and went that way. Is this how you get to the Queen's... The Sultanas? I need to know which stairway it is. It's not this main one, is it? Because this, this matters as well. Because they went to the Sultana's chambers to go through her fireplace. But I'm also pretty sure the Sultana's chambers were back here. I'm fairly confident. Oh, I like these little pools over here. We'll have to see. And then the gate happened, yes. Yeah, Kat, you gave me a spriggan. Do you want this one? And give no, you back the to... Sultana's chambers are actually inaccessible, technically, unless you're in story. So, but it's down this corridor, the main corridor with the black carpet. Because mm -hmm. you talk to her handmaiden at the main doors and she right. lets you in. So. That's what I was thinking, yeah, this doesn't lead directly to the banquet hall. It leads to probably the inner chambers as well as the banquet hall. But then that, that even makes it worse because they're pouring out of the banquet hall. I mean, we see them coming down this black carpet in the cutscene and then immediately engaging them. But we're supposed to go back up this corridor to get out? Like, either I have fucked up my memory of the logistics or these logistics were fucked to begin with. And that's the, that's the last thing I'm going to say. Like I said, I'm going to put together my uh, my alternative version that does all the same things um, but does not commit many sins. It does commit some sins, but not many. <laughs> it's stuff that only, like, if you're really paying attention, you'd be like, mm, that's a little far-fetched. But, uh, oh. <laughs> Just didn't even splat, didn't bounce. Just unbelievably sturdy, fat cat. Okay. It is time. Oh, you want Lenny in the fountain? Oh my god. I'm very sad. Right, let's get outside. Let's get outside. Yeah, I love this friggin'. I cannot wait to get to the island. I know it's gonna take so long for me to get there, but cannot wait because I want to be able to collect all of the spriggans. All of them. And then put them on the, uh, Put them on the island. Is there specific? There we go. Is the music playing, or is this just like the regular Ulda theme right now? It sounds like the regular Ulda theme. Well, you're going to be listening to whatever the hell plays when I go to do it. I'm pretty sure because I looked on the map because you I was... moved away from where it was happening, so... Don't. Don't tell me this. Just meow and I don't have to feel guilty. It's okay. You'll get to hear it in a minute. There we go. There we go. Oh, nice. 
that was. I'm pretty sure it's over here. Oh, Wandering Minstrel. Yes, that's him. Hello, Mr. P. Clockwork Solus. Do I know who Solus is? I don't think so. Not yet. Okay. I, I recognize his haircut. I don't hear it. I need to... Do you hear the music? I don't. It's so quiet for me. if you didn't have enough of answers doing T13. Yeah, I like this version because it's so, it's just so haunting, you know, it's just in the background. I mean, to me, that was the coolest moment of that documentary that we saw was just seeing the, just the, well, I think it might've been the music video, the video that went with this song, uh, where it's just Thalamut in the background. Back at the end of 1.0, before they dropped Alamut and it was big in the sky, there was this haunting version of Answers playing. Just, just out in the field. Wow. Yeah, incredible. I mean, I was it's telling very you. Unnerving. Yeah, I, I would have to be. I was telling, I think, you specifically that uh, the whole story of the 1.0 transition into 2 struck me so much, both because it's just an incredible story, but it's also like. It's so inspiring that a game could have that impact on that many people like that, and that it could be designed in such a way that is still, this many years later, still so memorable to people who were there, like you guys, and how, how badly I want to do that, you know? And that basically is the rising. Yeah. Well, let's get it started. All right. Am I reading this or are we just going through it? Read it. Okay. Greetings, friend. By your dauntless bearing, I assume you are an adventurer. As for myself, I am a humble, wandering minstrel, one who draws inspiration from the daring deeds of those in your calling. I hope Yoshi P. wrote this dialogue. If you have a moment, there's a favor I would ask of you. Will you not hear me out? Of course. In part due to the promotional efforts during the recent Moonfire Fair, more people... I don't think he directly writes it, but I think he has a lot of input on what goes into it. Mm, got it. In part due to the promotional efforts during the recent Moonfire Fair, more people are seeking to take up adventuring. Not all are yet wise in the ways of the world, however, and I fear they might fall prey to less principled types in Ulda. Well, this would be the place to find less principled types. If one such as you were to help them on their way, I would feel more at ease. What say you? Will you not take a fledgling adventurer under your wing? Sure. Why not? I'm truly grateful. Now I get to mentor Frackle. <laughs> Until he gets the basics down and just with all his experience in other games, he's just like, yep, I know how this works. Moving on. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh no. I'm still the baby of the group. <laughs> now I believe a carriage is due to arrive shortly. If you go and wait at the gate of gate of Nald, chances are a soul will wander in who has just embarked upon the path of adventure. Pray greet them and offer your help. Last time I saw new adventurers, they end up going to a necromancer's wedding. It, it was fucked up, you know? Maybe I don't want to mentor anybody. Nobody I've mentored has turned out happy endings, you know? Yeah. Worry not, you'll have no trouble identifying them. You need but look for someone absorbed in their surroundings. <laughs> I dare say it will feel like glimpsing into the past, right to the part where you were greeted by a helpful stranger. He just fucking leaves. I read that as your fuckboy, and I'm really sad it is not that now. Yeah, disappear in shame. Okay. Oh, good. Let's all just join the party. 
Oh, hi, Panda. Are you back to commit more crimes? <laughs> oh, that's him. I remember him from the promotional image. Fucking Lala fell walk. It's so good. <laughs> oi. Like I would ever say oi, we are as a Southern American as you can get. You'd probably say, well, hey there, stranger. <laughs> yeah, just, just casual greeting. We're also very used to <laughs> propositioning gentlemen from the street corner, so yeah, we fit right in here. <laughs> so who are you? Bitch, I'm the warrior of light. An experienced adventurer, you say, and you want to help me on my way. Well, I could certainly use some guidance. I've never been anywhere as big and as busy as Ulda. Oh, okay. I'm going to need a minute on this one. Nagia. Jakia, I would say. Yeah. Well, I mean, the A would have its own... This is a pause. You do a breath at an apostrophe, typically. So it would be Nagi uh, Jakaya. Yeah, Nagi Jakaya. Yeah, okay, we'll say that. Anyway, but just Nagi will do. And as you rightly guessed, I'm an aspiring adventurer. That's why I left my village and came here. Same! Literally just got tired of Thevnerian corn and decided there was more to life. Uh, and then here we are. I got wrapped up in all this shit. So good luck. So... I understand that you first need to register at the Adventurer's Guild. Do you know where that is? No, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> You're better off asking anyone else. It's a grand entrance, damn. <gasps> Just through that door, is it? Thank you. I'll head there at once. He's got pretty eyes. I struggled with that name. But you're a cat boy. Nagi rushes off before you can offer further explanation. Perhaps you should follow him into the quicksand. I did the same thing, too, I think. I think I ran right past Mother Miyun when I was supposed to talk to her a couple times. Okay. Oh. oh, that's what this thing is. I've just always thought of it as the restaurant. It is the Ulda restaurant. Panda? Panda, I found your brother. <laughs> your younger, lankier, 17-year-old brother. That's Panda for sure. I can see it. it's in the face and the hair, which as we know is genetic. Your haircut is absolutely not something you can change. Anyway. Moon boys have different suffixes based on birth order. Interesting. That's so cool. There we go. A means first son. Oh. That's very cool. In and out. In and out. Come on, Naki. You can do it. Oh, it's you again. To be honest, I'm quite nervous. It's heartening to have you here, too. <laughs> Hi, Panda. Panda put on this formal attire for this. Oh, no, don't talk to Mamodi. Last time I talked to this bitch, I ended up a man of enemy of the people. <laughs> Why, hello? Why, hello there? <laughs> Southern Goblin. I feel like that's Mamodi to the T. What can I do for you today? <laughs> Oh my god. Well, Yiz, you're no longer sentimental. Now you're dying inside for other reasons. <laughs> the lad's here to register, is he? Very difficult to do. 
Yes, madam. I wish to join the Adventurers Guild. My name is... Oh, God. Nagia Jakia. J Jakia? I think it's Jakia. That just sounds better. If it's a Titus Titus situation, I'm going to be upset. Yeah. There we go. Yes is currently choking on chili. You named your dick Chili? <laughs> That's weird. Anyway. My name is Nagia Jakia. And I'm 16 years old. Wow, really? I thought he looked young, but 16? Uh, practically a man grown. Ah, yes. Teenagers always rushing to be an adult and then getting there and being like, Oh shit, go back. <laughs> Why aren't we a live one? Mamote is the name, and if you want to be an adventurer, then you've come to the right woman. There's nothing to it, really. You just need to write your name in the register. Come, come. <laughs> For fuck's sake. I would have never started reading them as goblins if it was not literally Papalimo voice acting that did it first. Okay? You cannot get mad at me. It is canon canon. Sometimes they have voices that do not make sense at all. Uh, which is okay, but Papa Limo may be the only accurate Lalafell voice actor that I've heard. <laughs> With that, you're officially a member of the Adventurers Guild. If you ever need a bit of advice about one thing or another, pay me a visit. Just don't go bothering me every time you stub your bloody toe, all right? Like, she's very British, but still, you can read that Southern, no problem. Of course I do. <laughs> Enjoy hearing of a gentleman's woes with the women folk from time to time. Yeah. Can I get a refund on being an adult? Yes. Jesus. Now then, normally I'd offer you the grand tour, but currently there is political upheaval in the city. I'm not even supposed to be here. But in light of present company, oh, there, at least she's, rec she's recognized it. I reckon you ought to have it from him. Oh, no. Not me. He's a renowned adventurer, after all. The bleeding champion of Eorzea. And you could do far worse than get his advice. Yeah, I'm big shit around here, you know? Currently a wanted fugitive, but I, I've been there before. That's fine. To begin with, mayhap you could recommend a guild here in Uldav for Nike to join. It's too noisy in here. There are benches just outside where you can have a nice little chat, or as I've discovered, a fantastic nap. Yeah, let's do that. I think he's going to enjoy Gladiator's Guild. I feel like he's got something to prove. I feel like the Gladiator Arena would probably be the perfect place for him to realize he ain't shit and then change jobs. <laughs> I've been playing so much Xenoblade, I picked up my Switch controller now. <laughs> ah! <laughs> My brain is broken. <laughs> All right, let me see if it will let me do this. I'm going to get real close. That's what we do. There we go. We are definitely sitting together. Didn't sit on your tail, did I? No? We're good? Okay. Let us stand up again and lord over him. There we go. <laughs> yeah, he just murdered the Sultana, but eh, it's fine. I think Mamodi, we'll talk about this later, I think Mamodi is honestly going to probably be the linchpin because she can, she's going to be a witness to what happened and she can attest to the fact that I went out there to meet her for something and then like, if we find her dead, uh, that just makes it look like I fucking killed her too. I don't know, it doesn't really help. Mamodi doesn't have any pertinent information. If this were a murder mystery and we asked her for a, a testimony, that'd get flipped on us real quick actually. <laughs> Never mind. I must confess, choosing a guild is quite daunting. I'd appreciate any advice you can offer. Do it for ten levels, realize your shit, and pick something else. It's easy. You're not committing to anything. You just have to go through the dialogue to get to a new job. So, so fucking cares. The following event cannot be skipped. You may wish to cancel any pending duty finder registrations. Okie dokie. Yeah, let's talk guilds. There we go. I'm all ears. Oh, he called me by my name. Look at your little fangs. Your teeth are so cute. All right. Adventuring can be dangerous. What I try. Well, 
it is timely. What did you, why did you, yeah, let's just ask. It's more important that we invite him to talk rather than putting anything out there that could dissuade him. However, I think that with his personality, suggesting it can be dangerous might actually provoke him to be more eager with divulging what he wants and why. I think we'll get clearer motivations with this rhetorically uh, than we will, because this can do both. I think throwing that first line out is actually going to be very effective on him. Um, because this seems like I don't really know what I want to tell you. Because I've had to say this as a teacher. What do you need help with? Because I don't have anything planned for you. I think I'm going to go with A. <clears throat> a merchant who was in charge, who was in the, oh, a merchant who was in the carriage with me, a, a breathed something, asked me much the same thing. Oh, he also can't remember names. I feel like I'm supposed to be able to recognize who that is. Bremont, Br Brumont, or who's his name? Is this the same guy that took us on a carriage in the very beginning that we talked with? I can't remember his name, but it might have been like Bremont or something. Yeah. Anyway. I am jealous of her glam. Funkle, I would definitely kill someone over glam. 100%. Fashion is life and death. I would love to be able to wear the, the red pumpkin dress that the Sultana had on. <laughs> A glorified fucking moo moo. <laughs> At the time, I couldn't give a proper Depending answer. Depending on the starting city you went with, um, there are three dudes. There's Brennan, Bremont, and Brent, and oh. they're all related. I see. So it's being vague as to which one he came in with there. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I'm just going to assume he made the wrong choice. You know what? He did just arrive at Ulda, though, so probably that's the one he came in with. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he's been spared the mercy of having to talk to the elephant or the uh, giraffe woman. What's wrong, Nico? Why don't you want to talk to me? Beyond's not that scary. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> I'm more afraid of Mamodi, man. If I what the. I'm also terrified of Mamodi, but only because she's got that bartender charm to her. He's also a Lalafell in Ulna with her hair up. What's wrong with you? That's also true. That's a lot of red flags, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> At the time, I couldn't give a proper answer. I had a reason for leaving home, of course, but I couldn't express it in words. Dude, is this, this is my character's backstory. Give it back. Can't have it. But having now set in foot in Ulda, it's become clear in my mind. Oh, if Ulda made you think of anything positive, you are not a person I want to talk to. I wanted to know what lay beyond the horizon, to see with my own eyes and be amidst it. This place made you think of beyond the horizon for me the same thing but trying to get there as fast as possible you've been to many places right you like it then uh, traveling that is um now i i think if this were later in the storyline of all the expansions maybe i would say this we had our roots down we've lived that life we are now a wayward soul, and I think we're loving it. I love traveling. There's nothing like the thrill of seeing new sights. So you do. So you do. I have an older sister. Uh, during the Calamity, we fled Gridani and took refuge in a village in the mountains. Oh. Interesting. Where the hell was the bun boy during the Calamity? Was he just at home and had no idea what the calamity really was? He just looked on the horizon and the moon was coming down. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I really, I want to know. Am I allowed to know what was happening in Thifneria during the calamity? I'm so curious what the bun boy would have been doing canonically at the time. <laughs> he would just been like a young teen on the I farm. I don't see why you wouldn't be allowed to know. I'm very curious for lore purposes. Like, in relation to the Calamity, was it just like, oh, huh, look at that, wouldn't you know, that's interesting. I think a lot of the outer, outer 
continent parts were under the same kind of duress um with bahamut just we were focused on the main cities but we didn't have a lot of information so you have to kind of assume oh bahamut's attacking ah we're all going to die so it's mm. essentially mm, so it was like a real doomsday event for everybody yeah it's just the parts that we focused on the most are the ones the starting cities um the battle of Cartnu, which was in the cutscene that you saw the beginning one you know that right hmm it almost would make sense that there probably would have been some kind of like drafting efforts or whatever because you know it's kind of the end of the fucking world potentially we might as well um i wonder if bun boy was too young to get drafted but kind of hated that the thing too is for the drafting you have to remember ishgard was not involved they were their own city favner was its own they were out away they did not help the main mm. uh, contingent which was the three main city states interesting yeah that's the kind of stuff i want to know because i can build sort of his experiences prior to becoming an adventurer because right now i've just got like bored farm boy decides to go on magical adventure and then winds up here but i think it'd be really appropriate if during the calamity he really wanted to get involved to do something and maybe his you know maybe his parents were just like nah dude we're just gonna farm corn like there's definitely a tomorrow and just see what happens and then he's like no dude that's that's a shitty attitude if the world's maybe gonna end we should be doing something to make it easier it's not a and phase mom the way that um the way that it was set up um most of it was concentrated heaviest around the main cities so Ulda, limsa gradania had the highest concentration of spawning nonsense so um this was before dalamud crashed so we had all of this we had the garlands and the battle of cartnu happening um and that's when dalamud came down is the battle so it was kind of the main city states against the garlands and then you had bahamut suddenly mm. and here comes bahamut with the steel chair Basically, it, it, essentially, yeah, that's what it was. Because they were focused on fighting the Garlands in yeah. the war. The Battle of Cartnu is the big thing there. And then you had Bahamut. Fucking. So, I think, too, outside of the main city states and the main continent at that point, stuff like Bavner um, still had the effects of what was going on. Like, I remember reading all the mobs, all the monsters were assaulting, and it was really thick and, like, ruled on shit, but I think they were still spawning, you know, across the world, but in smaller concentrations. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. It's all really interesting, because I think there's going to be a really nice, compelling, cohesive, like, character narrative that comes out from all of this. It's building... Yeah, I also like all that background stuff. I'm still, I'm always going to be sad, I think, that I wasn't there for the 1.0 stuff, but um, we can still know of it, you know, and that gives me enough to work on now. So, we'll see. All right, we took refuge in a village in the mountains. Yeah, because we would have left Thavnir and come to Gridania five years after the Calamity so there's peace. Things are starting to settle down, and I think the, I think the stress of just being on the sidelines and doing the same old, same old, like nothing is happening, and knowing that the world is in such turmoil. I think Bun Boy decides it's time to go. You know. Um, figures out a way, I think just hits the road, vagabonds his way over to Eorzea. Um, I think gets there before really going to Gridania necessarily, or maybe he gets there and we just have a lot of off-screen fun times. Um, yeah, 
Like, all the time we were going through the rogue guild, like, all the time off screen is maybe spent just going around and thieving to make ends meet and stuff, you know, ignore the fact that we were filthy fucking rich when we did it, you know? But, like, narratively, we could weave all that together because we can separate it from the realities of gameplay, but, you know, we have those phases. Interesting. It's something I, I want to sit down and think about, especially as we go through the expansions, as we get more information and want to build up the character lore. For sure. Anyway. Yeah. I ended up staying in that secl secluded place, and it's long been a dream of mine to travel the world. But as experienced as I am, I know if I could live a life on the road is there a guild that could equip me with the skills I need? Oof. All of them are kind of good. I'd probably say fighting, because you're doesn't if you want to go out and gather, you're gonna you're gonna have to beat some ass if you're gonna get anything worth a damn. So I so I wanna send him into the into the uh, gladiator guild, turn him into a paladin cat. I see. A place where I can learn how to protect myself and others. If I recall correctly, Uldah is home to the Pugilists and Thaumaturgist guilds. Wrong! Of those two, I'd choose the Pugilists. I've always enjoyed rigorous exercise, and I'm quite confident in my physical abilities. Yes, I believe this is the guild for me. I'll go join at once. I can show you to the guild if you like. No? <laughs> Who's the independent now? <laughs> Thanks for your concern, but I should be fine. Bitch, you don't know where anything is! Okay, fine. Do what you want. If you still have time, though, could we meet again afterwards? There are a few more things I'd like to ask you about. Ask on the way there! Fucking idiot. Great. I'll look for you when I'm done. It's weird being in first person. Strangely intimate. Uh, to be in first person cutscene like that. He's not looking at him, he's looking at me and... <laughs> I'm not here! I'm the man behind the camera. You wait a good while, but there's no sign of Nagi. Perhaps you should look for him. You should look in on him at the Pugilist Guild. Well, having recently become and then immediately undone my role as monk, um, I do know where this is myself. And then I actually ran over there and actually did know where to go. Shocking, I know. I love the way the fat cat runs. Just wiggling kind of wobbly over to the left and right every now and then. Just fantastic. Oh, it's time for Hamon again. <laughs> that was the most impressive display, young one. Watching you, I'm reminded of myself and my youth. Swift, strong, and handsome. Didn't he give me the exact same line when I showed up? I feel like I've read this before. <laughs> not to say that I'm not these things anymore, of course. You're too kind, Master Hammond. And I'm sure you're still all those things and more. <laughs> now, now, Nagi. Take care you don't flatter the old man over much. His neck couldn't bear his head get any larger. <laughs> hey, sup, bitches. It's me. It's exactly the same thing you said to me. Nice. Oh, well, I'm glad to say that pugilism agrees with me. Uh, my thanks for your recommendation. <laughs> well, now, to think that you're the one who sent Nagi to us. The lad possesses rare talent, and I look forward to watching him grow in our art. Good. Right then, my boy. Remember today's lesson well, and keep your training. Next time, we shall try something a little harder. Sorry for keeping you waiting. So engrossed was I in the com combinations. I lost track of time. Oh, I should mention something. As I was training, a peculiar minstrel approached me. He said that if I'm resolved to walk an adventurous path, I should seek him out for a task. Moreover, he asked that you accompany me. If you're willing, he's apparently waiting at the Ruby Road Exchange. Sure, let's go. Momodi's lines were identical as well. I didn't even notice hers. Oh, I don't think I ever saw hers because I, she wasn't my starting city. 
Is she the... Is Momodi the... Um, Miyun of Gul'da? I picked up the controller again. What is wrong with me? I got Xenoblade on the brain, I guess. I've made a dumb shit meme yeah. build. Oh, good. I've made a dumb shit meme build, and I'm... Uh, Attempting to make it work on the super bosses. <laughs> mm. My friend, you have done a splendid job as a guide. I was right to entrust the task to you. What? Do you mean to say Miko approached me at your behest? He did, I must confess. You see, for my next composition... Oh yeah, next composition. I seek to capture the essence of the times. While any number of subjects would be worthwhile, the greatest interest to me is the recent rise of the ranks of adventurers. Well, I, this does seem very meta because he's talking about the recent rise in this last year of adventurers with the massive influx of players into 14 from the exodus of WoW and other MMOs. It definitely seems like that's exactly what he's referencing. That is probably exactly what he's referencing, yes. This, this event is severely meta-like. Good. All right. In thus bringing different generations of adventurers together, I'd hoped... Oh. In thus bringing different generations of adventurers together, I'd hoped for inspiration to strike, and I'm pleased to say that it has. Drawing upon your experience... Drawing upon your experience walking your path, you have helped Nagi to begin walking his, a reminder that the presence present owes its existence to the past. Yeah, I mean, every line is like triple entendre. <laughs> there we go. I mean, it's so cute, too, because, like, you guys are mentoring all of us who have recently started playing. Uh, and more than mentoring, you're, like, shepherding us through the game, and then eventually it's going to get to the point where other people join the community, and they're like, hey, I just started playing the game, and they're like, hey, come play with us, and then we're able to mentor them and then it's like we just keep increasing the flock. <laughs> yeah, it's really cute. That is to say, the present and the past are deeply entwined. If we would capture the former, we cannot well disregard the latter. And this brings me to my next request. I ask that you each find an object with a connection to the calamity. The event, the event which gave rise to the realms we birth and present it to me with its tail. Hell no, that sounds like a, not unlike a treasure hunt, and it'd be my very first task as an adventurer. What do you say, Miko, shall we do it? I present you the wind-up Louis Swa and the severed head of Bahamut. <laughs> Excellent. When you have your items, pray seek me out at the Ruby Road Exchange. I eagerly look forward to seeing what you bring. Very good. Who's this shirtless cat boy, also mostly pantsless cat boy, Fluffy the Cat of Mech Clan? <laughs> Fantastic. There are many vendors at the Sapphire Exchange, Sapphire Avenue Exchange, right? Chances are they'll have something, so let's begin our short search there. No, it's the last place you go. Oh, bye, Mr. Yoshi P. There we go. Don't do it, pumpkin bitch. Do not play. I need a button that mute, uh, mutes other players' music. Actually, let me go to him and see if that works. No, I still hear that. I need to have a button that turns off player sound so I can mute fucking bards. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Funkle, that's it. You, you want the story? The head's still dripping blood and everything. I, I killed it. Uh, okay. God, I hope they're not following me around because I don't know where the fuck I'm going. All right, let's go this way. Uh, off to the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. Yeah, there's a sound setting for performances. I just need the... Uh, I need to make a command into a macro and then I can put it on my butt and just be like, Nope! Do not DMCA me. I don't remember this. Oh, no. Oh, how sad. She's dead. I've done it to her. Not really, but still. I don't know who this boy is. 
I don't know who that boy is. I think this is the boy that we just ran into. He's a good boy. And then I don't know who the other tomatoes are. And that's really cute. He's okay. the... It, it. That's Pippin is the one in the front. Yeah. Obviously. Is this other boy going to be the new monarch? Because we need one. Yeah, I'm, I'm still really thinking about how this is going to turn out. Like, not for us, but like for Uldah, there's now massive political revolution happening. I cannot wait to see how it plays out. But if there's another boy here that stands to reason that there may be a legitimate heir. Maybe. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> As a fun fact, Javentia over there uh, was part of the Rising last year. So I should. I was going to say, I feel like I should talk to these boys. No, don't, don't worry about those boys yet. Go do your quest. Okay. <laughs> Back away. <laughs> okay. We'll go this way. That might be Papa Sean next to Pip. Oh, maybe. I don't think I know who Papa Sean is. Have I seen? I feel like I know the name. Uh, do we have a definitive winner for the Heaven Sword class yet? Uh, we do, but I'm not telling you until Thursday. Let me check it again, just because we're here. Let me see. We have nine votes total, um, which is weird because I figured we would have we would have more because we got more than nine people. But I suppose there are people that don't care, which is fine. But we do have nine votes, which has not changed since I last calculated the winner. Um, we have a winner. We have somebody who is very close, and then the rest of them are like half of that. Um, looks like Papa Shan. Yeah, Fern was right. I don't think I know who Papa Shan is, though. I hope it's going to be Sultan Papa Shan. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. I'm really interested in the Ulda con cl conflict. Conflict. I'm really interested to see how this revolution is going to turn out. I, I honestly think it's just um, a very basic pot, plot to capture the the throne, if you will, by Lolo Rito. He managed to get his one rival killed in the in the process. I mean, everything has just fallen into his lap. I can't wait to see what happens. It's very rare that a story has me this hooked in suspense. Very rare. There we go. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa Sean. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? All right. Um, are you the boy? You are the boy. If he's about 16, I honestly think that we are probably 1920. 19, we don't look like a teen. We do look like young adult. I would say that Bun Boy is probably 20. I think every expansion he's going to get a year older as well. I think that's fair. Come on, let's begin looking around. Nagi is now accompanying you. Keep him at your side in order to proceed with quest objectives. You can leave Nagi behind by entering a different area or by speaking with him, selecting the option to part ways. If you wish to have Nagi accompany you again, return and speak with him at the original location. <gasps> this is a cool mechanic. I haven't seen this yet. Oh. While you are accompanied, you may encounter conversation points along the way which offer additional topics of discussion. Enter the glowing area and speak with your quest companions to initiate these bonus conversations. Enjoy exploring your surroundings together. I bet there's a lot of ways in which this could be used. You've got to go around here and do investigations. Um, a lot of that. The thing with Nagi following you around, it's a mechanic that was introduced with Endwalker, so it is fresh and it's awesome. I mean, this sounds so cool and dynamic. It is. It is. I love it. If they ever do a revision again, you know, implementing this into previous sections that were basically go here, click on the destination marker, and then a bar fills up and then something happens. This is so much cooler. I'm all for retroactive changes when new mechanics come out, but I know that's a lot of work, but still, I mean, in an effort, I mean, it, I'm sure the devs know because they've gone through revisions of ARR to make it leaner, 
it definitely makes sense that the better they can hook him in with ARR, the more likely they are to increase their player retention, which I, I've to, got to imagine is a priority for them at some point. Ugh. Yeah, adding this in would be great. They've already gone back through all the dungeons and given you like a trust light kind of thing, and that's really fun. Like I love playing with that. Um, like for ARR, all the all the basic dungeons, um, you can take a set of scions with you, just like recruits. Mm -hmm. And the higher dungeon you go into, they actually grow and evolve, and like they change their outfits and what they're doing. And if you watch like the Thaumaturge when he's doing the limit break the first time, he's like super nervous, but later dungeons he gets more. Confident with what he's saying, and he's Aww. like, "Hell yeah!" Growing into his role, I love it. I did a couple of those to just practice with Summoner when I was still trying to figure out what my buttons do. Um, and yeah, I noticed that they were all really low level. They had shitty gear. I was like, "Oh, they're so cute." Yeah, it's it's a great touch. I love it, and I really want them to go back with this and add stuff in so you can like run around with some more, yeah. you know, like your favorite adventure friends and all that shit. Yeah. Nice. Okay, follow me, cat boy. It's time. Shall we go look this way? Let's see if there's a seedy back alley. I can show you how Uldah really works. Come on. You're going to want to get to know some of these guys back here because they're going to take care of you. Just like Littlest Guy of the Chaos Clan. He's a good one to know. <laughs> yeah, Land of Birds, also someone you want to know. Get used to seeing Alamegans in the alleys and gutters. Uh, they live here, but only technically. Uh, ignore this guy. He's a conniving ne'er-do-well. I don't know his name, but he's an asshole. Anyway. <laughs> if you run out of places to sleep, these alleys are pretty well known for... Uh, just being a place to rest your head for a minute. It's all stone. You're probably going to get robbed, but you know what? It's better than sleeping in the desert. So. <laughs> I feel like I'd be a really shit. I mean, I would serve it to him absolutely real. Honestly, I would serve it to him absolutely real. But this is the guy who's like, I'm the uncle who hands you a cigar so that you can know what smoking's like. And then never want to do it again. And just like, I'm going to I'm gonna cut to the chase here with you, kid. We're going to talk about 32-year-old shit. And then hope you learn. Anyway, come here. Oh, do I right-click on the boy? I do. Here's the local cuisine. It's all shit. Oh, is this the local cuisine? Oh, goodness, but everything looks amazing. Oh, unfortunately, you have terrible taste. In the course of your journeys, you must have sampled all kinds of food. From simple fare to exotic feasts. I look forward to sampling everything too. Would you like some pumpkin rat? It got me through some of my toughest times. <laughs> that and corn. My own homegrown corn. Okay, let's go this way. All he just had was corn. Hey, I grew that corn. That corn's great. There we go. House of Splendors. Yeah? House of Splendors. What kind of place is this, I wonder? I see you're not familiar with the house. Oh. I can't see them! Ugh. I see you're not familiar with the house. We offer wares in exchange for scripts, but our services are available only to those whom we know and trust. So if I want to be a customer, I need to make a name for myself. One day, Nagi. One day. Corn haunting me. Have some rat. It helped me punch a dragon in the dick. Yeah, pull out the Bahamut head again and be like, Hey, do you know where I got this? There's only one of them. No, Nagi, you don't want to be a part of that. That's Rowena's shit. Oh, no. Stay far away. Everything I've shown him has been, do not go here. Do not do this. Here's all the seedy shit you should probably not do, but you're going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, we know he's going to be sleeping on boxes in that alley. I might as well show him the comfy ones. This is the kind of real shit that's going to get him through. You know, if you're like Puppy Dog or Rainbow's Big, this is where you buy a sword, and this is where you go get your nice food. Uh, by the way, you're going to be too poor to do any of that. But anyway, have a good time, and then, you like, fucking dump him there. Like, come on. I'm going to show him the real shit. Butt stuff back scratcher of Shade Clan, who looks like Rob Zombie with the personality of fucking Big Bird. All right, anyway. Perfect. 
Oh, there's Stuart Little again. It's been a while since I've seen Stuart Little. All right, anyway. <laughs> Where am I going? Am I done with the boy? <laughs> welcome, welcome. What is it you're after? Uh, we're trying to show this kid around to a thaw. Give him a good time. Shout out to Daddy Thighs. The most delicious after meal snack. <laughs> Objects with connection to the calamity, you say? Oh, I have just the thing an amethyst ring from Ishgard, steeped in sentimental value. Five years ago, on the eve of the Battle of Cartano, a young Temple Knight set out from his homeland, wishing to do his part for Eorzea when his nation would not. Oh shit! That's us! Except I think we arrived after the the calamity. I think we were prob I think Bunboy was probably like trying to get there as fast as he could, but he didn't know anything but the family farm. He didn't know how to get money, didn't know how to get passage, had never been on a boat before. Um you know, so like there were a lot of obstacles to him actually getting to Eorzea, and I think by the time he figured it out, it had already happened. But I imagine he arrived not long after the calamity and probably spent some time trying to be helpful, but more likely feeling like he was in the way. Because he ended up just being another traveler or refugee or mouth to feed or person to have to take care of because he wasn't independent and self-sufficient. So I think that's why he ended up being feeling very guilty for having arrived at probably the worst time. Too late to help, uh, but way too early for them to be able to help him. So I think that's why he just worked on trying to be self-sufficient and living off the land as best he could with the skills he had. Um, being a true vagabond rather than being a refugee in any of the cities, he said, I'm not going to be a burden to anybody because that's the least I can do. It's the most I can. It's the, probably the most he could do at that time is just at least not be a burden to people. Um, probably ended up just wandering the forest because it was bountiful enough for him to be able to easily, you know, uh, find food, stay sheltered, you know, it was tempered enough that he wouldn't have to be too worried about it. Um, probably bopped around the three city-states, though, for the most part, but I think he probably would end up staying in Gridania. And that's probably the reason we ended up coming to Gridania at the beginning of the adventure here, is that he probably first arrived... I'd want to see a map of where Thavnair is... He probably would have arrived at Limsa if he came by boat, decided that place was way too urban for him. He was just overwhelmed by the verticality of it, the, the everything. Um, and then probably went to Uldah, probably felt really claustrophobic by it. Uh, or maybe he just felt really small and lost and it was too busy and then had gone to, well, probably went to Gridania second. Limsa, Gridania, Uldah said, fuck that, came back to Gridania as the only one that he had a decent time with. Um, and then once he arrived there, he got swept up into the all of this. Uh, and then finally latched on it. I think for him, oh, this is so cute. He finally found a way that he could help people. I don't think he really got roped into it at all. He didn't expect it to turn into this. But I think he was just looking to lend a hand however he could. Um, to pay back a sort of ethical debt he believed he had to the, to the people of Eorzea. I think that's the story. Then he let some cat boy sit on his face and was handsomely paid. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, listen, he figured out how to make money. It's That's the bottom line. He had to figure out how to make gill because he couldn't get anywhere for free. He didn't have any grass, so he paid with gill or ass, and he whatever was cheaper, he gave it, you know? Anyway, I think that's I think that's honestly the origin story. Now that I know 1.0, I know a lot more about the calamity. Um, I think we've come full circle in deciding exactly who he is, and I think we've added a little bit more of a we've added more of a purpose to his motivations for doing things. He's not just bopping around with no purpose. I think his purpose is always trying to find a way to help the people of Eorzea. I think it gripped him when he was younger, but he couldn't really do anything about it, and then. He arrived just a little bit too late, but now he's found a, a way that he can help. And I think that's nice. That's touching. That's a to me. That's a compelling character development. Um, there's a whole journey that's had a whole coming of age story that's happened up to this point. Now we're here. You know, <laughs> that's how it sounds. The real story has already happened, but now we're living in the epilogue that is. Well, we just became an adventure. The end. 
Anyway. <clears throat> Alas, the man never arrived in the flats. En route, he came upon a merchant being attacked by a dragon and lost his life going to the stranger's aid. This was his ring, an heirloom passed down through his line. What a tragic tale. But I wonder, how did the ring find its way back? If the knight fell, it seems the merchant couldn't have survived unscathed. There we go. Um, uh, I remember now. Uh, though the knight was mortally wounded, he succeeded in striking the dragon down. And with his last breath, he entrusted the ring to the merchant. Yes, that's how it happened. Uh, so what do you say? If you're interested, I'd be willing to part with the relic for a special price. But for today only, ah, yes. Convince you you're getting a deal and add a time pressure. Make you think that you are getting a steal here. That this is too good an opportunity to pass up. You're fucking lying. However, hmm, this feels a bit dubious. Ah, wise boy. Lesson number two, my boy. Everybody be lying to you. 100%. Everything you hear in Uldah is a fucking lie. Everything. Also, I love the hidden uwu. Fantastic. Please tell me that's Funkel. If that's Funkel, I'm fucking VIPing you on the spot. Here we go. It's a ring pop. <laughs> Here we go. Anyway. <laughs> Shall we look around some more? There's bound to be other things out there. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I've gained, so, speaking, because uh, we need another tangent right now. Um, so I've been researching voice acting agents, and I've been digging into all that. I'm, com I'm compiling a database of um, agencies, what they do as a spread. Are they focused on one thing or in different areas? Where are they based? What is my progress of interaction with them? I've reached out. They have responded we are moving forward, we are not. I have followed up, we are moving forward, we are not. You know, that's that sort of thing. And I've got a whole checklist because there's no fucking way I'm gonna keep this organized. Um, but I have to write a cover letter for every one of them. And part of it's gonna be generic, it's gonna be mostly the same framework because I don't need to say something different about myself every time. I'm gonna have my one paragraph of bio about myself and that's what I'm gonna tell all of them. But then I'm gonna talk about what I know about them as the beginning of the cover, or the second part of the cover letter. Um, Paragraph, paragraph, two, three paragraphs. One, purpose for writing this. Paragraph two, what I know about you. Paragraph three, what you need to know about me. Probably the other way around. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, the point of all of this, Jesus Christ. Um, the, the point of all of it being that I have not voice acted uh, pretty much anything that we've done over the course of me reading all this dialogue. But... I will say that having to read to you guys has made me a lot more comfortable and confident over the course of this whole journey uh, in being able to get behind the microphone and do actual performances. And uh, so it's been, it's been really impactful in that area in ways I didn't anticipate that it would be. Anyway. Just little things that pop in my head. I've got to say them or they will disappear again and never return. More Lala fell. <laughs> Greetings. From the daily necessities to unusual curios, I deal in all manner of wares. If there's something in particular you seek, you need but ask. Here we go. Oh, might I offer you some sweet cream in these trying times? Oh, silver, maybe. I got another PM a minute ago. What was it? Uh, let me see. I got a PM a, like a while ago. Hold on, let me scroll up to like 30 minutes ago and see where that was. I know I got a PM at some point. I heard that that noise before. Oh, Panda said sup, bitch. Okay, that's it. Got it. <laughs> glad I glad I went back to read that. All right, hold on. Uh, event. Hmm. Objects to do with the calamity. The two of you are adventurers, are you not? In which case, I have something that may be of interest. <laughs> It's a journal I acquired from an adventurer who retired injured. The man was recorded his experiences during the calamity in detail, and I dare say it is value for students of history. 
Oh, an adventurous first-hand account. I'd love to pour over it. There we go. You stop that! <laughs> I'm getting strange messages from people now. Yes! I've wanted this my whole life. I have mail too, that's true. I just remembered that. <clears throat> do you keep a journal of your adventures as well, Miko? I do! I imagine that he is a sentimental writer because for so long he probably didn't have anyone to talk to uh, because he was just kind of surviving on his own, but he always kind of had interesting things happen or interesting moments. And I think as much as this was an adventure, I think he probably kept notes in the in Letters Home. Um, he didn't really keep a journal as much, but he would write Letters Home every now and then detailing his different adventures and things he's gone on. Um, and I'd like to think that it was possible to have pictures in this world in Eorzea. I don't know if that's really a thing, but I'd like to think that the G-Post pictures we've had are like little Polaroids he's got that he can stick on the letter, you know? Like, hey, I met this guy, Alexander Osias, and, you know, he was hanging out, and I met this guy. His name is not another panda. What a weird name, right? I wonder where he's from, that sort of thing. You know, we went off, and we were running these dungeons together, and had a great time. They kept me safe while I was shooting shit. You should see me with a bow, Mom. You know, that sort of thing. It's fucking cute. I, I think that's the way he keeps journals. But he does write. It's kind of sentimental for him. It's not anything he would ever share. It's a little bit for him to kind of put his thoughts down, keep himself sane, feel like he's t still a little bit of him as home. If he gets homesick, he writes a letter. Oh, it's so fucking cute. That's the shit I love about writing and, and having characters, is that you find those little quirks, those little niches that are deeply tied to the, kind of their soul. Um, who they are, what they want in life, what they want from the world. That influences what their behavior is, and their behavior influences their history and all that stuff. So I, I don't know. It's just, it's so cool. I love figuring this stuff out. When I'm writing characters for my stuff, that's where I start is just who, who are they as a soul before they were even born, you know? Um, and as a writer, their their soul is pre-configured, and then I put them in a body, and I throw them in the world, and then variables happen. And at that point, they're just like a ping-pong ball falling through the obstacles that is life. Um, and then we just see what the fuck happens, and usually a very compelling story is what happens. Uh, and I've found a lot of success in that methodology. Uh, so making the character lore here is something that I'm very much enjoying. Uh, but yes, I do keep a journal of my adventures in a sense. If so, I'd love to read it too one day. Uh, with your permission, of course. Mm, denied. Wow, I got, uh... I got bombed by IT Chad. There we go. Oh! Uh, for another historical piece, I also have a scrapbook of articles from The Raven, uh, Gridania's leading tabloid. Uh, these mainly cover events outside the Calamity, however. Articles from The Raven, you say? Hmm. So far, so good. Let's look around just a little bit more. Okay. Let's do it. Vigorous pounding! You shall be doted. Lady Demetrius? What the fuck? You're huge! <laughs> May I interest you in a vigorous pounding? <laughs> Is this Fern's alt? She's so beefy! Damn, dude. <laughs> she just looks up at her crane neck. <laughs> anyway, I'm running. Goodbye. I have taught the I've taught the boy how to dote. Listen, boy, unlock that emote as fast as you possibly can. It's going to make you so many friends. There we go. Ah, here we go. Now I talk to the boy. Max Femro. I know, seriously. Fern's old. Greetings, and welcome to my exhibit. Please feel free to browse at your leisure. And don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions. We're looking for... Oh. We're looking for objects that bear a connection to the Calamity. Do you have anything else that fits that description? As a matter of fact, I do. Yonder Payne, entitled the Sultana Seven, depicts an inspiring event from the Calamity. Oh, <laughs> its value has just gone through the fucking roof, though. Do you realize that? It was the final days before the fall of Dalamud. Its inexorable approach foretelling our impending doom. 
A panic spread like wildfire, while many in their desperation turned on the Sultanate. Oh, turned on the Sultanate. Looting and rioting broke out across Uldah. There we go. To quell the masses, Her Royal Majesty Nanamo Ulnamo took to the streets with a guard consisting of only seven subjects, for they alone had the courage to stand with their Sultana. There she addressed the rabble. Heed me, my beloved. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it to you. She's super British posh. Here we go. Perfect. Here we go. <laughs> Heed me by your beloved citizens. The realm lies upon the brink of the seventh umbral era. Yet so long as we live, we must not forget our compassion. Now is not the time to take from your neighbor, but to puffer him in the hand of succor. Brought to their senses by her words, the people laid down their arms and set about healing the wounds they themselves had inflicted upon Ulda. And those who returned from the battlefield found their home much as they had left it, a gleaming jewel in the desert, polished shit in the sand. So he is the breeding male of a clan. Well, hey, stud. Should I call you Stallion? Right? Her Majesty sounds like a great ruler. Sound, sound dead. <laughs> Hilda is fortunate to have her watching over it. Oh no. Oh no. Does the game recognize if you're before or after a certain point and changes dialogue, or is he about to become a very sad boy? Oh, new I was wondering how this was going to play out because some quests do and some don't. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, no response. No one corrected him. It may not be well known yet because remember, only people at the dinner know. Ah, so we just stay very quiet. <laughs> Don't look anywhere. <laughs> Thanks for sharing the tale. It's indeed inspiring, and you've done an incredible job capturing it in glass. That's glass work? Yeah, he does glass. He was in the last Rising event, and I don't remember fully what it was about, but yeah, he was making glass works like the whole time. Holy shit! He basically comes to look for um, inspiration, and he gets you to help him fix pieces and make stuff so part of it is yeah incredible i mean i would love to see modern technology and advancement and you know tools and all that stuff the precision and complexity that we can do today with stained glass i just want to see it taken to something like this level i've always been a fan of the stained glass look um absolutely love it. it's one of my favorite aesthetics but when it's done in like a high art fashion and not just hey brother tommy we need a we need a stained glass for the monastery you know it's not just some shit they put in the windows but like when it becomes true art you know that's incredible so i want to look at this again because there's there's like i know the fuck why is it dark oh it just went night okay sorry is that dalamud <laughs> anyway sorry rambling today there we go. I dare say we've seen enough. Let's find a quiet spot to discuss what to bring back. <laughs> we're not getting this. Honey, we're not taking that. <laughs> You've seen enough objects and learned the stories behind them. Make your way to the end of the Sapphire Exchange with Nagi and speak with him. Mm -hmm. Let me look at this again. You get up on a box. I can't stand on that box. Oh, fuck. What if I, if I G-pose? Will I get a better angle on this? Move. I mean, I don't see a reason that we couldn't get pigmentation to be like skin tones. I mean, these lines would be pretty close together unless the painting was bigger, but you could just do thinner braces there that you pour the glass into. All of this seems like it would be possible. When you have that coloration within the lines, this is what could get a little tricky, but there are other ways to pigment glass like this that could be done. 
I feel like this would be very hard to do, but still possible. I wonder if there are high art glass uh, painters. I gotta look into that. I, I feel like I'd be blown away by it. It's one of my favorite types of art uh, is glass blowing. It blows my mind. Like, I don't understand it, and it's mystical to me. <laughs> it's the same way with watercolors. Absolutely captures my my uh, creative mind. Because there's something about having to control the most uncontrollable substance, water, and then to do it in such a way that it becomes appealing to the eye and not a fucking mess. Like, being able to do that... It's it's it goes beyond skill. It has to be a talent. You just have to understand things in a way that I don't. I studied like I studied watercolor, and I've got I think the talent for it. I understand the physics of it, but I don't have enough experience with it to be able to really take charge of it. There we go. Yeah, I have I've met one glass blower, and it was when I was in a ceramics class. This dude just did all of the. Uh, all of the practical arts. Where am I going? We just have to pretend that we're taking him somewhere. Oh shit. Oh, damn, I didn't want to come here. I wanted to show him this in case he does want to go crafting. You need to learn how to mend your shit. This is the place that will teach you how to do that. Where am I supposed to be going? Okay, good. God damn it. Anyway. A little detour. You've seen IRL stained glass like that? I've never seen it in person. I have seen uh, designs for stuff like that. In the game I'm making... <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, I know. I try so hard and I get lost. Meow, meow, meow. I, um... There we go. Thank you for meows. You can't teleport with, um... Oops. <laughs> oh, maybe you can. Holy shit. <laughs> I didn't even consider it. Just fucking yellowed him through the Aetherite. Like, does he even know what this is? <laughs> yeah. Just face into it. <laughs> like, the first time you encounter this in Endwalker, if you Aetherite with your NPC friend, they just disappear. That's why I was panicking. <laughs> then you have to go pick them back up. Oh, no. The, the same thing happened when I first learned what Aetherite 2, what it, what it was. I didn't realize they were teleporting waypoints. So when someone went through them, I'm like, oh shit, what the hell just happened with that dude? He's gone. I figured they were going into a dungeon or something. I stayed far away from them. There we go. Okay, cool. Very good. We talk to the boy. Right. This looks as this looks like as good a spot as any. Look how wide his stance is, dude. He's ready to go. I don't know about you, but <laughs> that was all very new and exciting for me. Talking to myriad people, learning the tale behind each object, it's been a great experience, and I won't soon forget it. Now then, we need to decide what we want to take to the minstrel. Have you made up your mind? I mean, if you're going to give me the option, I'm going to take the Sultana 7 pain, but there's no fucking way they're going to give that to me, right? Ishgardian Knight's Ring, no. The Retired Adventurer's Journal... Um, let's be practical. Realistically, this is the only one we're probably going to get. I see, I see. I did consider that too, but in the end, settled on something else. What was it? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to keep it a surprise. It, it's obviously the glass pane. If you pick up the ring, I'm going to be so fucking mad at you. Come, let's purchase our respective items and meet back where the minstrel awaits. I'm not spending money on this shit! This asshole's spending my gill for me! You obtained the retired adventurer's journal. Would it have given me the glass pane? Did I, sh did I undersell? Hello? What's this portal doing? Take me! <laughs> I was ready to go wherever that went. There was adventure on the other side. <laughs> Perfect. Oh god, where am I going? Why do you guys why 
You guys routinely allow me just to be unsupervised and just out and about doing things. Uh, several times now. Fuck. The Wandering Minstrel's there? Okay. Oh, that's a cat boy. I got baited into buying a book. Well, hey, that asshole's paying for an entire masterwork uh, painted glass. <laughs> I, I, I'm not the loser here. I'm not buying some sham ring. I might actually learn something from this journal. Hey, Rappik. Welcome back. You've each found an item, I trust. Mm. Well, now, what do we have here? Hand him the 75-pound glass pane. Shatters in his hands. At least he's wearing safety goggles. The Journal of an Adventurer, you say? Despite the vendor's claim, such records typically do not have much historical value on account of their limited perspective and inherent partiality. That's what makes history! What? Yoshi P! That's what makes history. The truth is found in all of the perspectives and reports. We know that it's partial. We know that it's limited perspective, but it still offers something. We just have to put it into context. Come on now. Yet, by the same token, they have great value for me, for they offer a glimpse into the writer's heart. There's no richer material for pinning verses. Here we go. Here we go. Let him finish? No, I did let him finish and he didn't say that. He said something completely different. I was right. It wasn't let him finish at all. <laughs> now then, what of you, young Nagi? And what might this be? Oh, he went for the book anyway. Okay. This wasn't a bait and switch. I should have brought him the glass pane then. I'm curious what he would have said about it. It's a scrapbook of articles from the Raven. You see, my sister is a reporter for the tabloid. During the calamity, she traveled the realm, interviewing adventurers about their journeys. And I love nothing more than to hear her tales. They seemed like such a diverse crowd, the adventurers. No two people were alike. And yet, they were united in the free, unshackled lives they lived. And such a struck a chord with me, and in time I found myself admiring them. There we go. Looking back, it was my sister who instilled in me the desire to see the world, to become an adventurer. That's why I chose this scrapbook. What a chin. Look at that jawline. God damn, dude. I see. The footprints someone leaves on their journey become the starting point for another. Yes. A verse comes to me. A blessing for the souls who are taking their first chair at... Chari steps into the unknown. Pray, lend me your ears. Oh, this is real bard shit. He just cast something on me. It's level 90. Probably some level 95 spell that's not even released yet. Is this what it's like when I peloton everyone else? <laughs> hmm. I don't recognize anybody. Except Leandri. Are these the heroes from the 1.0 thing? Greetings, Warrior of Light. This is a world that exists outside your reality. Could it be a dream? A flight of fancy conjured by your weary mind? Perhaps, or perhaps not. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Oh, 
Naoki Yoshida. Ah, and I've beckoned you here that I might express my gratitude. Actual dev. First of all, I wish to thank you for continuing to grace us with your presence. You and your fellow adventurers are an inspiration, and this shall never change. The world, however, is an ever-changing place, mysterious in its elusiveness. Unexpected hardships may turn our lives upside down, and though we all desire peace deep in our hearts, the sparks of conflict never cease to be struck. Like an adventurer's journey, the world is constantly moving towards the unknown, and it takes considerable courage to alter course. Yet I ardently believe that it is a small but significant step in our quest to create new adventures. Indeed, another great change is about to visit the world, and it shall, and it shall open the way for exciting new journeys. I think it's just one of each race, right? They don't look uh, particularly protagonisty. And tis our abiding hope that our journey together shall ever continue on to the distant horizon and beyond. Now, the time has come for this vision to end. Time for your eyes to open from this waking dream. Return to walking your path and know that you are in our hearts always. No. Till next we meet, I bid you safe travels. <laughs> that fucking ear wiggle. Thank you for the generous reward and the uplifting verse. Gives me courage for the road ahead. What a good boy. Speaking of which, it's time I set out on my own. Though it was brief, I enjoyed our time together. I hope to see you again somewhere out there. Inevitably, we'll bump into each other again. <laughs> this line! Pass my regards to your sister. <laughs> oh. There we go. Now, we don't smile much. I'm not going to tell him to smile. I look forward to hearing your tales. <laughs> Can we this an actual dialogue line? Say out of your sister for me. <laughs> there we go. Though much and more was lost in the calamity, intrepid souls continue to set forth, paving the way unto the future. In such a moment in history do we stand, and for you I would perform another song. I'm not singing. Hmm. Would we have so I was going to say, would we have PTSD from the dive bombs and the, the mega flares and the other shit that's been raining down on us for the last couple months fighting Bahamut? <laughs> we, we hear the fireworks and we're just ready to run to book club. <laughs> Where's C? Where's C? <laughs> I wonder, how did you feel as you watched Nagi set off? Did the sight fill you with worry for a fledgling adventure? Did it awaken fond memories of your own humble beginnings? It was eerily accurate to my own <laughs> origin story, so yeah, I think it's familiar. Whichever it may be, I know that yours is a journey more trying than most. There will be times when you are overcome by loneliness, and each step feels heavier than the last. In such a moment, I bid you remember this. So long as you harbor love for this world, ever shall there be a place for you in it. Your adventures will never end.
Nice. What was his response, Fern? When he said, pass my regards to your sister. I Can I know the reasons? Oh. There we go. Nice. Or is it, uh, is it spooky lore time? You have unlocked the Jigsaw Puzzle minigame. Oh, to play minigames, open the toy chest found in any in room. There we go. Okay. All right, good deal. Nice. Hello, cowboy. Look at you. Look at you. There we go. Nice. Pat, pat my shoulders. I see you've got the wind up ears as well. Okay. Mr. Catboy, would you like to talk about Raid Night, or is there other things you'd like me to do before that? Are we going to finish AR Art tonight? Um. Might wait for Thursday, honestly. <laughs> Start on Saturday. But raids! Mm, true. Maybe start next Monday, then. I think if I started now, it would be like three hours. It would be like midnight before I finished, honestly. Long stream. Long stream. No. I have my long day tomorrow. I have to get to bed on time tonight. Boo. Fine. I know. All right, so let's talk about raid night. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let's get in position. There we go. Okay. All right, listen up, sluts. <clears throat> uh, Rian, Yiz, and I have been organizing in the background uh, during these last couple weeks uh, to formalize how we want to organize Raid Night moving into the future, going into Heavensward and uh, beyond. These guys have, I think, a combined bajillion years of experience raiding in any uh, various games as well as Final Fantasy XIV, and they are lending this community their expertise, as it were, um, on top of all the other assistance that we get from them and all the other guidance. So we have come together. Uh, I as sort of the community manager and the two of them as people who know what the hell they're doing. And we have put together and, uh, well, we put together some structures. Rian, what do we have? So to start, we have a form for anyone, anyone, and I cannot stress this enough, anyone in the community that would like to do stuff. Um, this encompasses not only, you know, stuff like actual raid night for the harder end content, but for also, you know, like fun shit. Like if you want to do meme runs, if you want to do shit like maps, just, you know, if you want to be involved in stuff that the community is doing, we have a form for you to fill out to see, you know, where people want to do things. We also, if you haven't noticed in the Discord, uh, mm. there have been some changes to the meet party tag. We have some ranks set up for people um, going forward for all of this. Cool. Right. That sounds good. So what are those what are those ranks? How are we dividing people up? Not necessarily dividing them separately because we know that they could be all three if they wanted to, but what are the kind of tracks that people could sign up for depending on the content they want to do? We have different layers of meat parties. So we have the meat party platter, which is the general core, quote unquote, of the raid team. This is the high end, tough, bullshit raid content for people to come and, you know, get their asses collectively beaten. We have meat party sides for anyone that still wants to do the harder content but can't make it all the time and you'd be more comfortable doing you know like fill in stuff like um coming to mind would be like murgo who comes and fills in causes chaos and then we don't see him for two weeks we also have um the meat party light which is just for the fun bullshit you want to do maps fine you want to do a meme run of fucking eight healers fisting bahamut we can try it <laughs> hey fruit tusion eco Good. All right, so we've got the form. We've got some roles on Discord. And uh, what if somebody is looking for more details? What can we do with that? I 
I believe we have a document for that. We do. Um, yeah, uh, Yiz and I have worked on a series of guidelines and outlines for structures for exactly how things are going to work out in detail. Um, and it outlines sort of the commitment expectations for those who want to do the harder uh, end of things, uh, as well as some guidelines that helps everybody have more fun in the lighter end of things. And we'll be releasing and pinning that document tonight, right after stream. Um, Silver asks, where do we sign up? That is going to be the form, which will also be linked and pinned into the Final Fantasy chat. Honestly, we could go ahead and link those now if you wanted to and let people go. There's no reason to wait till the end of stream. Yeah, I can throw the link to the form at least. Okay. I do want to stress that if you are very interested in the high-end content, the super high-end content, make sure you please read the document in full and know what you're walking into. Mm. If you have any questions or misunderstandings or any just generic, I didn't understand this part, what exactly are you trying to say, reach out and ask. Mm -hmm. um, either I can explain it or Miko can explain it or even Alex can explain it. Mm -hmm. But make sure before you hit yes to hard, hard content, you know what you're walking into. And possibly if anybody might be intimidated by that concept, as far as I understand it from talking to you guys uh, over the last couple of weeks working on this, it doesn't seem like it's much more necessarily than what we've already been doing with, say, the Coils of Bahamut, except that we're just going to become more organized and formalized in the way that we do it. Yeah, it's not a whole lot, and it won't become a whole lot more until we hit uh, quote-unquote current tier. Mm. Um, but that's a ways off, so don't stress about it too much. What would you say is probably the hardest? So we understand the scale of what, when we say hard, what do we mean? What does that include, Yiz? Anything that is going to fall into what is considered savage content. A lot of the upcoming raids will have savage attached to their names. It just means they're much, much harder versions of their normal counterparts. Uh, mechanics change. That's about the major differences. That's it. Um, there's extra mechanics stuff changes in the fight, but not the fight itself. Got it. This upcoming weekend for Raid, if people are interested in seeing Savage content, there is a tier of it for the Quails of Bahamut. We can go throw our faces in it and get extra steppied. Yeah, that'd be fun. I'm down for it. It could be great. Okay. Also, to address Silver, um, in regards to like Bahamut in comparison, you cannot put Bahamut, the fight itself, in a comparison to Savage content, um, just because of the jank that comes with his fight in particular. Um, I would put him like early Savage content um, in like Heaven's Word. Savage content there is kind of what his fight feels like without the jank and without crit. So what I'm hearing is that if we've been enjoying the Coils of Bahamut, if we've enjoyed this journey, then we probably want to sign up for the harder stuff because that's about what we've been doing relatively, right? Yes. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Because a lot of those fights are very fun. But like I said, they're normal counterparts. You get the base of the fight just from doing mm -hmm. them. And some mechanics get added in the Savage version. That's it. You can think of going forward the normal and savage versions, like going from a hard mode primal to an EX primal. It's not an exact comparison, but it's kind of the same idea. Right. So not to say that we're going to be, you know, sweaty goblins in our basement, you know, pooping in a bucket because we can't get away from our computer or going for world first and stuff. We're not going to be anything close to that, but we are going to be pushing for the hard content in the game and at least attempting most of it. And the only things that would probably be very different are ultimates, but we know mm. that um, they're not in, they're not, there's not a comparison for anything in ultimate. Mm. But, ultimate but could is be, its yes. own tier of getting your dick kicked. 
so as far as I understand, it seems like Ultimates is probably past that line of what we would expect to be able to go in and, and reasonably set down to do. It would be kind of a, a new tier of investment. Yeah, okay. pretty much. Okay. Yeah, Panda. Ultimates are their own tier um, by itself. If you enjoy the content we're doing now and you had fun doing Bahamut with its jank and all, you'll enjoy savage content. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I don't have any questions because I've been sitting with this for a couple weeks, but if anybody has questions, they can come to any of the three of us. Um, you two, though, are the experts here. I really don't have much more to contribute <laughs> at this point. Um, but uh, as a liaison, maybe just in case, you know, I'll, I'll forward any questions I can't answer. And I appreciate both of you um, working so diligently to get this turned around so quickly because it was kind of an idea that at one point we're like, you know, by the time we're hitting Savage content, we want to kind of have an idea down. But here we are able to release it before the day we walk into Heaven's Sword. So that's because you guys dedicated the time and all of your knowledge to it. So I appreciate that. And I'm sure the community will, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, do you hear the ear flick that happens yeah so this is fantastic um are the links posted by the way are they there yet or should i go do that now i posted the poll but i haven't posted the other document would you like me okay. to throw that up too yes please and i think you're able to pin stuff so you might as well pin both i don't think i have my rank to do stuff yet ah i gotcha okay so i'll take care of it if you just post it i'll pin it yeah, Funkle, if you're going to be like an... I don't know who to talk to for that. That'll be Quatchy. He'll make sure you get that. There we go. There we go. Hey, Cat. It's good to see you. Yeah, watch the VOD. I think you'll enjoy it. We went through the Rising event, uh, and that's basically been the whole stream, and then we're talking about Raid Night, which we're just now here to. Um, okay, let's see. So I'll pin those. Uh, Quachi will get your permissions on that role so that you can manage. You may have to post the document because it's still linking to the edit version. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I should fix that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Mr. Raid Leader, uh, in the rulebook, it says that Miko gets priority roles on all loot. Excuse me? <laughs> what is this right there? <laughs> Well, fuck, I haven't edited that out yet. <laughs> Here we go. Don't make me go loot master. Oh. Does it get... Completely missed you in chat. Did I? You just said you were watching and you were watching... I saw you a bit ago, but you said you were watching Pups and missed everything. Sometimes you come in here literally just on audio. Do not sass me. You guys are coming for my throat today. God damn. I can't do fucking anything right. Holy shit. All right. Y'all enjoy that. I'm going to get off stream. Uh, so that's all I got for you tonight. Here we go. Has this been you or you Dalson Clovershoe? Very nice. I like the earrings, brother. All right, friends. Good night. I'll be back to Thursday, and we will do the last of the cutscene Bukake for sure. Saturday raid night, Sunday raid night. Monday we'll start having sword for sure this time. For sure this time. Good night, guys. <laughs>